Mary Immaculate Hospitals Knee and Hip Replacement Seminar. Hi, my name is Debbie and I am your nurse navigator. I want to thank you for choosing Mary Immaculate Hospital to help restore you to a higher quality of living after your joint replacement. This presentation will outline the surgical process from getting ready for surgery through recovering at home, providing clear expectations regarding your orthopedic care. You play a key role in ensuring a successful recovery, and our goal is to involve you in your treatment through each step of the program. Your education and compliance will help to ensure a safe and successful surgical outcome. Please feel free to call me or email me if you have any questions or would like to discuss any information presented. Education book. All the information presented in this seminar can be found in the education books about knee and hip replacement surgery. You should have gotten a copy of this book from your surgeon's office when you scheduled surgery. If you did not get a copy of the book, when you're finished with this seminar, you can download a copy of the book by looking right below the seminar and clicking on the link for the correct surgery and the book will download. However, you can also call your surgeon's office and ask them to mail you a copy of the book or you can stop by their office and get a copy of the book. It's very important that you read the book before and after surgery as there's more information presented in the book than in the seminar. Fill out the survey. When you have completed this seminar, please fill out the survey located on the preoperative education page above this seminar. Once you fill out the survey, a copy of the survey will be emailed to me so that I can let your surgeon know you watch the seminar. If you have any questions, please ask them in the survey. I will send you an email or call you if you don't have email to answer these questions. Bon Secours My Chart. Please set up your MyChart account now. You can access all your appointment times, test results, surgery notes, and financial information through the Bon Secours MyChart. To get help setting up your MyChart account if you haven't activated, please call 1-866-385-7060. About your surgery. You will find general information about your hip or knee replacement surgery in the education book. Please speak with your surgeon for more detailed information about your specific surgery to include what implant they're planning on using. Did you know? The recovery from joint replacement is muscle recovery. Before surgery, the arthritis in your hip or knee was causing you quite a bit of pain, so you were walking differently to compensate for the pain and using your leg muscles differently. After surgery, you will have no more arthritis, but you will have pain from the muscle soreness, stiffness, and swelling. Therefore, the recovery after a hip or knee replacement is muscle retraining. The best way to retrain your muscles is to use and move them. So to get ready for surgery now, stay as active as possible and use those leg muscles. Also, we encourage you to do the exercises listed in the back of your education book starting now so that you work, can work on strengthening and stretching out those leg muscles. This will make your recovery after surgery much easier. Pre-anesthesia testing, also known as PAT. Pre-operative nursing interview. Once you and your orthopedic surgeon have agreed that surgery is the best option for you, your surgeon's office will send information to the Mary Immaculate Surgery Department regarding your surgical procedure. From here, you will be scheduled to have a preoperative nursing interview over the phone. You will receive a call from our PAT department to schedule this mandatory nursing interview. During this mandatory scheduled phone interview, the PAT nurse will be asking you to share your medical history, your surgical history, allergies to include both food and medication, and your daily medications, including vitamins, herbal supplements, and anything over the counter that you take by mouth or you put on topically. 
Be sure to have the bottles available for this interview so that you can provide the medication name, dosage, and how often you take it. Make sure during this interview you have a paper and pencil available so that you can write down any instructions you're given by the PAT nurse. Your personal medical history will determine what preoperative testing you will need before surgery. While your nursing interview must be scheduled, your medical tests may be completed at Mary Immaculate Hospital without an appointment. This must be done within 30 days of surgery, but the sooner the better. Common tests that you may have done are lab work, which is non-fasting, meaning you can eat and drink before the lab draw, an EKG, you may need a chest x-ray, and you may need a urinalysis. The results of your test will be sent to your surgeon and put into your MyChart account, and you will be contacted if your test results are abnormal. It is also best to undergo a complete physical examination with your phys family physician within 30 days of surgery. Your surgeon will let you know if this is a requirement for you to have surgery. If you have any high-risk medical conditions or see a specialty doctor, you may also be required to obtain surgical clearance from these doctors, such as a cardiologist or a pulmonologist. During your scheduled nursing interview, you will be instructed on which medications to stop taking when to stop taking them, and which medications you should continue to take based on your surgeon and anesthesia guidelines. Please make sure you have a piece of paper and a pencil handy during this interview so that you can write down the medications and the instructions that the nurse gives you. You can find examples of some of these medications listed in your education book. Herbal supplements, Vitamins and over-the-counter medications need to be stopped 14 days before surgery. This includes oral and topical medications. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, also known as NSAIDs, are generally requested to be stopped seven days before surgery due to the increased risk of bleeding. Anticoagulants or blood thinning medications are also generally requested to be stopped in the weeks leading up to your surgery. Check with your surgeon and prescribing physic physician regarding when to stop these medications. Please be aware if you do not stop them, your surgery may be postponed. Diabetic medication. Please talk to your prescribing physician about how to manage your diabetic medication before surgery. Often, you will be told to either take half or less of the medication or to stop the medication the night before or the morning of surgery. Your daily routine medications. Again, the PAT nurse will review these medications with you and let you know which ones to stop, when to stop them, and which medications you need to keep taking. Again, please write this information down as it's easy to forget as you wait for surgery. Pain medication. You may continue to take the following pain medication as prescribed to manage your pain as you wait for surgery. However, we recommend you try to cut back on the amount and frequency you take the narcotic so that the narcotic pain medication prescribed to you after surgery will work better. If you see a pain management doctor, please make sure you inform them you are having surgery. If you have any questions about medications before surgery, please call our pre-anesthesia testing nurses at 757-886-6411 or 6300. Get ready for surgery. Start today by picking a coach. What is a coach? A coach is a friend or family member who's going to be willing to encourage, support, and cheer you on as you recover from surgery. In order for your coach to be helpful, have them watch this seminar and read through the education book so they know what they can do to help you as you get ready and recover from surgery. Stop smoking. Smoking increases the risk of lung complications during and after surgery. But did you know it also decreases your body's ability to heal and it increases the risk of an infection in your new joint? 
If you aren't ready to stop smoking yet, please try to cut back a few weeks before surgery and don't smoke the day before or the morning of surgery. If you'd like help to quit smoking, please talk to your primary care provider. Stop alcohol intake, or at a minimum, limit your alcohol intake at least two weeks before surgery. After surgery, please check with your surgeon before you resume any alcohol intake. Eat healthy. Eating healthy is critical for healing after surgery. Maintaining a healthy diet before and after surgery helps to give you the energy you need to heal, decreases the risk of an infection, helps your blood sugar to be maintained, and it reduces the risk of heart disease and high blood pressure. We encourage you to prepare and freeze or purchase small portioned healthy meals for times you may be alone. Did you know it's normal not to be hungry after surgery, but you still need to eat so that you heal properly? For times you're not as hungry, we encourage you to have some protein supplements available, such as protein bars, protein powders, or pre-made protein drinks, such as Insure, Boost, or Premium Premier. Keep moving and stay active. Remember, you want to stay as active as possible before surgery. The more you exercise and loosen those muscles, the easier your recovery will be. To help you out, we encourage you to do the exercises in the back of the book as you wait for surgery. Set up your home for safety. Remove any tripping hazards such as throw rugs or cords. Arrange furniture so that you can easily move about your house with your front wheeled walker. Place night lights in dark hallways and in your bathroom so you don't trip and fall. Place everything you use on a daily basis on counter level, waist level, so that you don't have to reach up or bend down to get things. We don't want you to fall. Now get these things before surgery. Tylenol or acetaminophen, we recommend you get extra strength and have it at the house. Stool softener and a laxative have those available. You will need a front wheeled walker and if you're having a trouble getting on and off your toilet right now or you have a low profile toilet, we recommend you get a raised toilet seat or a bedside commode. To get this medical equipment, you need to speak with your surgeon's office as Mary Immaculate does not provide these things and you need to have them before you come to the hospital for surgery. Going home after joint replacement. Joint replacement is considered outpatient elective surgery that you are choosing to do to improve your quality of life. That means you have time to get yourself and your home ready to go home the day of surgery. Many people are nervous about going home the day of surgery, but let me encourage you, do not be nervous. At Mary Immaculate Hospital, we send most of our patients home the day of surgery and people do very well at home. Remember, you are dressing, bathing, walking, taking steps, and driving a car with an arthritic joint. After surgery, you will have a brand new joint that has no more arthritis. You will be able to stand on your leg after surgery and walk on it without damaging the knee or the hip. The problem is the muscles are weak and stiff and tight and sore. And so this is muscle recovery. And the best way to recover the muscles is to move and use them. And you will do that better in your own home environment. Before you go home, you will work with our therapy team to make sure you can safely walk and take the steps. Remember, the more prepared you are before surgery, the better your surgery recovery will go. Make sure you set up your home, get your medical equipment, and arrange for someone to stay with you the first 24 hours after surgery if you go home the day of surgery because of anesthesia. If you don't have family, I highly encourage you to reach out to your friends as I know they'd be willing to help you. It's hard to ask for help, but now is the time to lean on your friends and let them assist you. If, however, you do not have any support system, please speak with your surgeon before you come to the hospital for surgery so they're aware that you do not have anybody at your house and can come up with a plan on what will happen for you after you leave the hospital. Cleaning your skin three nights before surgery. 
You should get your CHG bathing solution from our registration department when you come for your preoperative testing. If you did not get the CHG bathing solution, you can either come by registration and ask them for the cleaning solution or call our pre-anesthesia testing department at 757-886-6411 to find out where you can get the solution. It's important that you do bathe for three nights as it decreases the risk of infection after surgery. Where and when to come for surgery. The day before your surgery, you will get a call from your surgeon's office telling you what time to report for surgery at Mary Immaculate Hospital. If your surgery is on a Monday, you will get a call on Friday afternoon from your surgeon's office. Depending on your surgeon, you will either check in into the surgical pavilion located next to the emergency room or on the second floor of the main entrance of the hospital located off Denby Street. Your surgeon's office will tell you which entrance to go to. Day of surgery. Please check in at the location and time that your surgeon's office instructed you to do so the day before surgery. Once you check in, you'll be taken back to the pre-op area where you will get ready for surgery. You will remove all your clothes, including your underwear. Be assisted with wiping off using CHG wipes and have your nostrils swabbed with an antiseptic, all to help prevent infection. You will put on a hospital gown and non-skid socks. You will have an IV started. Be given any medications your surgeon orders for you to take. Once you're ready in the pre-op area, you will be allowed to have one family member or friend wait with you until it is time for you to go to the holding area. You will be taken to the holding area via stretcher where you will meet with your anesthesia team. Your anesthesiologist will review your history, discuss anesthesia, answer your questions, and have you sign your anesthesia consent. Once you sign your anesthesia consent, if you are having a knee replacement you will be given medication through your IV to help relax you and to help ease pain as your anesthesiologist will perform an adductor block. This is a single injection where numbing medication is injected into the adductor nerve and the inner part of your thigh. This is to provide pain relief for you up to 12 hours after it's administered. This is a sensory block, not a motor block, so you will be able to get up and walk after surgery. When it's time for surgery, you'll be taken to the OR. You can expect your surgery to take about an hour and a half to two hours. Revision surgery may take longer. Once your surgery is over, you will be taken to the PACU, also known as the recovery room, to wake up from surgery. Once your anesthesia team says you're safe, then you will be taken to the phase two discharge unit if you are going home the day of surgery. In the Phase 2 Discharge Unit, you will be allowed to have one family member or friend sit with you as you continue to wake up from anesthesia. Once you're awake, you will work with our therapy team and work on taking some steps. Once our therapy team says you're safe to go home and you're able to urinate, then we will discharge you home with your family and co or your coach. If the plan is for you to spend the night or if your surgery gets out too late, and you're unable to work with therapy, then you will be taken to your inpatient room where your family will be able to come and sit with you and visit you after surgery. If you arrive before 5 p.m. to an inpatient room, you will work with our therapy team and attempt to take the steps. If you clear the steps and the therapy team says you're safe, then you will be able to go home once you urinate and eat some food. If therapy does not clear you, or you are unable to work with therapy the day of surgery, you will stay the night with us. Please let your family know that they can stay up until visiting hours are over. Once they're over, they will need to go home as we do not allow family or friends to stay with our patients at Mary Immaculate Hospital. During the night, you can expect that your nursing team will help manage your pain they will help you get up and walk to the bathroom. Men especially should not be using the urinal all night long. It's important that you start to get up and move as soon as possible for your recovery. In the morning, you will sit in a chair for breakfast. 
After breakfast, you will work with our therapy team to walk and take the steps. Once you clear therapy, then our nursing staff will work on getting you discharged home with your family. Our goal is to get you home by lunchtime. Anesthesia information. Please refer to your book for more information about anesthesia. There are two types of anesthesia that can be used during your surgery, general anesthesia or spinal anesthesia. General anesthesia is a combination of anesthetic gases and IV medications. A mask is placed over your mouth and nose for you to breathe oxygen in before you are put to sleep. You are given medication in your IV that puts you to sleep. Once you are asleep, a breathing tube is inserted in your mouth to give you oxygen and anesthetic gases that help you keep, stay asleep and manage your breathing during surgery. IV medication is also used during surgery to keep you asleep and manage your pain. Some of the side effects of general anesthesia are you will feel groggy the rest of the day. You may feel dizzy and lightheaded. People often have a lower blood pressure. Some people complain of nausea and some people have vomiting after general anesthesia from the gases. And some people complain of a sore throat from the breathing tube. Spinal anesthesia. Spinal anesthesia is a combination of IV medications and spinal medications. You are given relaxing medication through your IV that helps you go to sleep. A short acting numbing medication is injected into your back, causing you to lose feeling from your waist to your toes. IV medication is also given during surgery to help you stay relaxed and asleep. With spinal anesthesia, you do not have a breathing tube, but you will not remember your surgery. You are less likely to have nausea and vomiting after spinal anesthesia, and many people wake up much quicker and feel less drowsy. Interarticular injection. This is a combination of medications used to help with swelling and pain control after surgery. This may be injected by your surgeon during surgery into the tissue around your joint to provide pain relief for 12 to 24 hours after surgery. What to expect after surgery? Pain. Pain should be expected as you recover from joint replacement surgery. The day of surgery, you will have medication on board from anesthesia and from your surgeon, so the pain won't be as bad the day of surgery. You'll be able to start walking, take the steps, get in the car and go home, get up and go to the bathroom in your home, and start your recovery. Our goal is for you to have pain tolerance. Don't be surprised if during the first night or the first day at home that the pain starts to get worse. And then day two and three after surgery, people often report that's when the pain is the worst. We will discuss how to manage pain in the next couple of slides. Bleeding. You will be on a blood thinner after surgery to prevent blood clots. Therefore, you will bleed easier. So don't be nervous or panic if you see some blood on your dressing after you get home. That's expected. Just keep using ice and it will slow down any bleeding that's occurring under the dressing. However, if you saturate or soak your dressing once you're home, please sit down, reinforce the dressing with some gauze, an ace wrap, put some ice on your knee or your hip and then give your surgeon's office a call to find out what you should do. Bruising. Again, you will be on a blood thinner and so you can expect bruising after hip and knee replacement surgery. Don't be surprised if the bruising gets worse over the first two weeks after surgery and it can be significant from the blood thinner, as you move and use your muscles, they're gonna swell and you can get bruising. Don't panic. A lot of people get nervous because of the bruising, but we expect you to have bruising. Numbness around your surgical site can be normal after surgery. Swelling. Swelling gets worse the first two weeks after surgery as you move and exercise more. We will discuss how to manage swelling in the next slide. However, please don't be surprised if you have a lot of swelling one to two weeks after surgery. This is normal and expected. Managing swelling. 
As discussed in the previous slide, you should expect to have swelling for several weeks after hip and knee replacement surgery. The best way to manage swelling to get it out of the leg is to elevate your leg when you're not walking or doing your exercises. When you're sitting in a chair or lying in a bed, you want to elevate that foot up where you get the toes above your heart level. For knee replacement patients, it's really important that you work on keeping your knee straight when you're elevating as you're working on stretching the muscles behind the back of the leg in order to be able to straighten out your leg. The other way to help manage swelling is to use ice. We recommend you use ice 20 minutes every hour for as long as you have pain and swelling. If you have time, you will find it very helpful to have a ice machine that circulates cold water. You can purchase one or you can borrow one from a friend. Or you can purchase gel packs. You want to make sure you have several gel packs so that you have some in the freezer while you're using some on your leg and then you rotate the gel packs as you recover from your hip or knee replacement surgery. Managing sleep after surgery. It is often hard to sleep for the first few weeks after surgery. This is because you're laying at night thinking about everything you've done all day and your brain is not being distracted and therefore all you do is focus on the aching, throbbing, and soreness that you're experiencing after surgery. Some tips to help you sleep after surgery include limiting your fluids and caffeine after dinner. Stay as active as possible during the day, including getting up every hour and walking short distances. We encourage you to have rest periods during the day, but make sure you don't sleep for hours on end as it will be harder to sleep at night. An hour before you to go to bed, stop looking at your cell phone, iPad, television, or laptop as they emanate blue lights that stimulate your brain and make it harder to go to sleep. You can take some melatonin or Benadryl to help you sleep. If you decide that you'd like to take some Benadryl to help you sleep, make sure you do not take it at the same time as you take your narcotic pain medication. You wanna spread those out by at least two hours because both of those can decrease your breathing and we like you breathing normally at night. During the night, if you have a lot of pain, we recommend you get up and walk around in order to loosen up those muscles and warm them up and then lay back down and go to sleep. Managing nausea. The medications you're taking and anesthesia and often not eating enough contribute to nausea after surgery. Therefore, you need to eat before you take any medications. This is really important, especially if you get up in the middle of the night and move around and decide you need to take your pain medication, please eat a snack. It's always wise to keep food on your stomach. Therefore, just eat small meals frequently throughout the day. Anything with ginger and peppermint in it help soothe the stomach and help with digestion. It's often normal not to be hungry after surgery. And if you have an upset stomach, Sometimes it's easier to drink protein supplements. We recommend you have protein bars, protein powders, or pre-made protein drinks, such as Ensure, Boost, or Premium Premier, to help you when you're not as hungry. And then, of course, you can take over-the-counter medications, such as Nexium, Omeprazole, or Pepsid, or you can also take some antacids, like Tums or Rolaids. If your nausea persists and it's impacting your ability to eat after surgery, please call your surgeon's office because they may be able to prescribe a medication for nausea for you to take. Managing pain. There are several ways to manage pain as you recover from joint replacement. Deep breathing exercises are very helpful to help you focus on your breathing and to relax your body. Distraction. Watching TV, playing on your phone, reading a book, talking to family members, getting up and staying busy in your house will help you not think about the pain. Again, elevation and ice are critical for helping you to manage pain after joint replacement. Exercises help to keep the muscles loose from being stiff and sore and tight. And then of course, medication, prescription, narcotic and non-narcotic medication. 
medications after surgery, antibiotics. Antibiotics are prescribed for some people to take at home for the first few days after surgery as a precaution to prevent infection. No, you don't have an infection. This is just a precaution. Remember, a side effect to antibiotics is it can cause an upset stomach, taste of food to change. So make sure that you eat before you take an antibiotic. You may want to also take a probiotic to protect your stomach. Blood thinners. Everyone who has joint replacement surgery has to take a blood thinner to prevent blood clots. Remember, as previously discussed, a blood thinner will cause you to bruise easier and bleed easier. That is a side effect. Be careful brushing your teeth and shaving also because if you cut yourself, you'll bleed easier. Narcotic pain medication. You will be prescribed a narcotic to take as needed to help you manage your pain. The side effects of narcotics can be itching, being too sleepy, having trouble sleeping, causing you to be constipated, upset stomach and nauseated. So please make sure that you have food on your stomach before you take a narcotic. And remember, as the pain gets better, you need to wean off the narcotic. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, also known as NSAIDs, may be prescribed. These too thin your blood out, but they're used to help with inflammation. So they also can cause ble bleeding and bruising. They can upset your stomach as a side effect, so make sure that you eat before you take them. And they can irritate your kidneys, so make sure you're drinking plenty of fluids as you take an NSAID. Stool softener and laxative. This may or may not be prescribed for you, but you need to be taking them as long as you're on a narcotic, as the narcotic will cause constipation. Make sure when you're taking a stool softener and or a laxative that you are drinking plenty of water and eating plenty of fruits and vegetables to help with the constipation. Tylenol, also known as acetaminophen for pain. As you wait for surgery, you may have been told to stop medications that normally help with your pain. You can safely take Tylenol as you wait for surgery as it doesn't thin your blood out. How to safely take Tylenol is one of two ways. You can take extra strength Tylenol, two pills, three times a day, or you can take Tylenol arthritis, one pill, four times a day. If you're taking a narcotic and you want to supplement in with some Tylenol, please make sure you check to, that your narcotic does not contain Tylenol, as you do not want to take more than 3,000 milligrams of Tylenol in a 24-hour period. Narcotics that do not contain Tylenol include a plain oxycodone, roxycodone, Dilaudid, also known as hydromorphone, tramadol, also known as Ultram. After surgery, we recommend if your narcotic does not contain Tylenol that you put yourself on the Tylenol schedule as you recover your muscles after surgery. Tylenol is excellent to help with muscle soreness aching and throbbing. We recommend you do not take Tylenol if you've been told by a provider that you should not take it or if you're allergic to it. Prevent complications. You play a key role in preventing complications after surgery. Blood clots. Blood clots form when blood is not circulating in our body. Therefore, you need to walk short distances every hour you're awake to keep those muscles loose and moving. Change positions when you're laying or sitting. Do ankle pumps or ankle circles 10 times an hour. Take your blood thinner, known as an anticoagulant, as prescribed. Constipation. Constipation is a side effect of anesthesia and narcotics and decreased motion. Take a stool softener or a mild laxative one to two times a day and drink water at least eight glasses a day. If your bowels do not move within three days of surgery, you need to increase the amount of stool softener or laxative you're taking. Please don't make the mistake of not taking a stool softener because you're not eating as much after surgery. Your bowels still need to move within three days of surgery, even though you're not eating as much. Infection. Please keep your incision dry. Make sure you're bathing your skin off every day and shower as directed by your surgeon. Wash your hands frequently, 
eat healthy. If you're diabetic, please make sure to manage your blood sugar as it increases your chance of getting an infection if your blood sugar stays high. And smokers, please refrain from smoking while you're healing. Pneumonia. Pneumonia happens when we don't take deep breaths and fluid settles in the bottom of our lungs. So please make sure you're using your incentive spirometer 10 times an hour. If you did not get an incentive spirometer or you can't find yours, it's okay to take deep breaths and cough 10 times every hour while you are awake. Therapy after surgery. Our goal is for you to recover at home. If the plan is for you to have home health, your surgeon's office will make those arrangements before you come for surgery. You should be contacted by your home health agency before surgery. Make sure you write down the name and phone number of the agency so you can call them if you have any questions before or after surgery. What you can expect is a physical therapist to come out three times a week and the first visit should be within 24 to 48 hours of surgery. Some surgeons do not arrange for a nurse to come to the house. If you don't have a nurse scheduled to come, then your physical therapist will help you manage your dressing. If the plan is outpatient therapy, your surgeon's office will make arrangements with the nearest outpatient therapy department to your house to work with you. You can expect your first appointment to be within 48 to 72 hours after surgery. If you're unable to make that appointment after surgery for some reason, please make sure that you reschedule that appointment as soon as possible and that you let your surgeon know that you were unable to go to your first therapy appointment. As far as managing your dressing, please read your discharge paperwork for how to manage the dressing. And if you have any questions, please call your surgeon's office. Thank you for trusting Mary Immaculate Hospital for your total hip or knee replacement surgery. We look forward to meeting you and helping you on your road to recovery. After you close out this seminar, please don't forget to go back to the top of the page and complete the survey. Please ask questions if you have any or ask for clarification about information. Make sure you provide me with a working email address and your phone number on the survey so I can reach out to you and answer any questions you may have. Thank you.